Salman Rushdie is making a startling claim that he had tickets that had been provided to him by the organizers and despite having an invitation to the Kolkata Literary Festival at the behest of the Chief Minister, he was forced to back out. Joining us on this broadcast is Mr. Mani Shankar Ayer representing the Congress Party. We also have Kabir Bedi joining us. I want to go across first to Mr. Ayer because Salman Rushdie is calling this and a lot of people watching this broadcast, Mr. Ayer would agree, a state of cultural emergency in our country. That free speech is being choked and the government's not just of the Trinamool and the Congress, but across the political system is guilty of choking free speech, Mr. Ayo. Please let me give one clarification that I've come on this particular program, not as a congressman, but in my individual capacity, because I'm not authorized by the Congress. I haven't asked them either uh, to comment on this issue. But as an individual, I think I'd like to remind Mr. I'm not concerned with whether he had an invitation or not. These are things that he can sort out in a tutu meme with the Chief Minister of West Bengal. The more fundamental issue is that when Mahatma Gandhi and the first civil disobedience movement was arraigned before the district sessions judge, he said that it was the duty of the judge to prescribe the highest punishment permitted by the law even as it was his duty as Gandhiji to oppose a law that he regarded as unjust. So when Mr. Rushdi interprets freedom of expression to be freedom to blaspheme, then he cannot escape the consequences of the anger that this causes among the faithful. And I think satanic verses was so gratuitous in the insults that he gave to the Muslim community uh, that uh, there is... There is little doubt that he'll have to live with the consequences of that. For a You're long saying time. that what he wrote and, uh, was so, so incendiary of, that he has to winning, live with the consequences, Mr. Ayer. But Kabir Bedi, several people would argue that there is no genuine anger, that there was no protest happening, that the chief minister just to play to her vote bank and to the gallery scuttled this visit. There was no protest on the ground at all. I, I, I'm coming to you, I, Mr. Ayer. Let's just hear from Kabir Bedi. I'm coming right back to you. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Rahul, the thing is that, you know, um, whatever the laws, you, politics always takes over. Uh, Mamta Banerjee, for all her many achievements, is not known to be a big uh, supporter of free speech, in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, she is uh, playing whatever uh, the vote bank politics she's playing in the same way that the Congress played that at the Jaipur Literary Festival last year because the UP elections were coming up. So these are factors that they can work out as calculations and they figure that the fallout from the liberal press will not matter to them as much as actual votes on the ground. And so these measures are taken in a very calculated way, knowing that um, at the end of the day, uh, they will manage to block or, 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 or an author or, or prevent something being said. But actually it becomes totally counterproductive. The demonstrations at Jaipur Literary Festival last year that prevented Salman Rushdie reaching the grounds ultimately resulted in Salman Rushdie talking to a major network in India from London at prime time for an hour. So what would have been a normal local lecture in Jaipur suddenly became a national event and the people that are trying to ban him actually gave him a hundred times the greater amount of publicity. That is the nature of the media today. And Thanks to the media, we are talking about defense of freedom of expression, as it should be. It's one of the fundamental rights uh, enshrined in the United Nations Declaration, in the uh, um, European Convention, in the African Charter, uh, all the way back to the French Revolution. The, the, the freedom of speech is enshrined with some limitations, depending on the country, but it is a fundamental human right according Mr. to the Ayer, human, you uh, argue human charter. That Salman Rushdie must bear the consequences of his writings. But can I please present to you a thought, sir, that there was no anger, that there was no protest. This is entirely by politicians for their selfish political interests. And that is what is killing the idea of India. And that is what is leading to the imposition of a cultural emergency across our countries. I hope you'll give me the right of freedom of expression to say that what you've just said is rubbish and much of what Kabir Bedi has said is also rubbish. We are not denying Mr. Rushdi or Rushdi, whatever his name is, the right to indulge in his right to blaspheme. 
But if he does indulge in this kind of gratuitous blasphemy, then he has got to have to face the consequences. Like Gandhiji said, he would face the consequences. And therefore, this kind of whinnying that I'm hearing has nothing to do with, uh, with stopping the freedom of expression. What I also want to emphasize is that somehow both you and Kabir seem to think that you use the word vote bank, you've denigrated everybody. What is politics about except collecting votes? And how do we collect votes? By responding to the feelings of people, to their desires, to their demands. And if you, you I don't see how you can, on the one hand, say that it's all politics because they're dirtily demanding vote banks. We won't get those vote banks unless we are responding to what they want. Mr. Ayer, I think Salman Mr. Rushdie, Rushdie went to Bangalore. He was in oh, Delhi. Sure. He was in Mumbai. There was not one single protest anywhere that just and these are cities of the substantial population of minorities if there was genuine anger against salman rushdie in the manner in which you're making it seem there would have been thousands of people out on the streets in delhi mumbai bangalore not one person came out this is entirely political it's not a genuine protest sir rubbish may i add it, to that Rahul? it is may not necessary that? for people because to come I, out onto the streets here. in order to express their anguish People have anguish in their hearts without coming onto the streets. And there's no need to invite people to come out onto the streets. It is the duty of governments to be sensitive to public opinion in their respective states. And in a state like West Bengal, I think it is important for the chief minister to take that into account and to run the administration. If okay. Those people I, I want Kabir Bedi to respond to the argument no, you're making. Want her. They you're can vote against her. You are saying it's not imperative for people yeah, to I come out into the streets. Politicians must be sensitive about the concerns of their voters. That's what politics is all about. You know, if you go by this uh, appeasement of fringe groups, then there is no end to censorship. A small, unimportant group in Tamil Nadu uh, raises this whole issue. And because of the perceived threat of a group that has hardly any members, Suddenly a film is banned and a filmmaker is almost ruined with financial losses. That is the worst kind of cultural censorship. censorship. But let me also say, That's according to Mani Shankar's logic, uh, if after the fatwa had been issued on Salman Rushdie by Iran, America said, oh well, let him pay for his consequences, let him do what he wants, let him save himself if he can, it would have been the most um, ridiculous thing to say. It is the duty of the government to prevent uh, violence against people who are expressing their opinions expression of opinion is one of the fundamental rights as long as it does not libel incite to violence uh, there's there, there, there's uh, into the public health and as the, the judgment of the madras court said what just a perceived blasphemy? sense that some disorder may occur is not grounds for banning a film you know there's massive losses caused to 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 to, to artists and there's a chill sent down the spines of all people that want to make films with any opinion because some group somewhere will object to it and that becomes the defining right of politicians shouldn't, to shouldn't say, the government Mr. Ayer, politics, we stand have right up to do this. for the right of people to say what they want even if they are conflicting opinions highly divisive opinions at least have the right to make that opinion the argument is important in a democracy we are scuttling the argument forcing people just to tow a straight line this way we'll have no argument no debate in our democracy because the government will not allow it will not allow people to stand up and say what they want I'm afraid you're dragging a particular event into generality, which is not true. First, let me just deal with uh, Vishwarupa. It has been cleared by the government of India. The same government whom he's accusing of pandering to a vote bank is the government that is standing for the right of Kamala Hassan's film to be released all over the country. It's been released in the Hindi theatres today. As far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, there are discussions going on which have been facilitated by the government there. And I'm no great uh, admirer of the Tamil Nadu government. But they have facilitated these discussions. And I think an answer will be found. And I don't think Kamla Hassan is going to lose his hundreds of crores of rupees. As far as the freedom of expression... What are these discussions about? What are these discussions about? This is... Let me, let me finish uh, this on... Been certified. They have to ensure its release. Uh, if Salman Rushdie is threatened with the fatwa, the British government provides security for him. They don't say take your chances. 
it is the duty of the government to protect citizens Absolutely. who are expressing their lawful rights. Well, we, not we pro not those in India has provided security. Are creating trouble in India has provided no, security. No, he gets called when he is right told, Mr. Ayer. That's not fair. That's not factual. Mr. Rushdi is told if you come to Kolkata, we we'll put not. you on the next flight back to Delhi. That's what he was told by a senior yeah, member of the Tamil Congress. I, but I'm so I'm so glad that he was told that. If that is the view of the duly elected government of West Bengal, and if the people there don't like it, they're going to vote them out. So, when you get this anti-politician, anti-democratic, anti-vote kind of attitude that Kabir Bedi repeatedly displays, then I'm afraid this is a fascist Manish, attitude. Your attitude it's is undemocratic. Democratic. It's you who are undemocratic. And as far and as far as Vishwarupa is concerned, the same but you government are being undemocratic of India, here. The same government of India. The same government of India is accusing of pandering to what he calls vote bank politics is the one that is standing up and for the necessity, group politics. the legal fringe necessity group politics. of the film being shown. You know, one man who I, I don't, faced... I don't know why he's... The government of India repeatedly is saying the film must be shown. And it is being shown. And the one state in which there seems to be a problem, that that state government is attempting to resolve matters. One man who's faced the fury of the mob over the last few days is Sanjoy Eroy, chief organizer of the Jaipur Lit Fest. He's joining us. Manish Tiwari, Union IND minister, is also joining us on this broadcast. I want to go across first to Sanjoy Eroy. Sanjoy, you know, we're hearing from Mr. Ayer uh, the government's view, which is that the West Bengal government is duly chosen. It is their responsibility to take care of their constituents. The minorities are an important constituent. They've been offended by what Mr. Rashdi has written and therefore the government is well within his rights, well within its rights to ask Mr. Rashdi to back away. But I am sensing a larger cultural emergency. You've been facing the wrath of the mob. Do you think freedom of speech is under greater threat than it has ever been in our country, Sonja? Absolutely, Rahul. You know, I, I think there are a number of problems here. I don't think anybody is talking about the right of minority or disenfranchised groups not to be given a hearing. That is absolutely imperative if we have to go on, go on to become far more of a plural society which is united. But I think in this case, why is it only that artists are targeted again and again? I keep saying that artists finally are, are high visibility, low utility. You don't, you really hear that a politician is stopped from saying something. You really hear business people stopped from going across the border or coming across the border. It's always only the artist who is banned or burnt or whatever, because at the end of the day, his voice, however important it may be, actually means nothing to either vote bank politics or to the politics of the state or otherwise. And as far as the security goes, you know, Rahul, I think one needs to question. Of course, the state government is completely in its right to ban A or ban B or ban C. There's no question of it. They're democratically elected. They have a right to do so. But are you trying to say that a state government cannot protect a person, one person? That seems to That's me... That's a very compelling argument here. that artists have high question. visibility, no political utility. And why is it that only artists are targeted? Politicians can make any manner of divisive comments. Bal Thakre is respected in his death despite the amount of damage he's done to law and order in this country. Everybody bows down before him, including our political system. An artist, because he's got no political utility, he's targeted, Mr. Ayer. There are any number of laws which particularly apply to politicians. And I refer here to the Representation of People Act, as well as the decrees of the Election Commission, that if if statements are made by politicians, particularly those running in elections, which are designed to foment any kind of communal animosity, they are not to be allowed and the person to lose his seat and not be allowed to contest elections for several years. It happened in the case of Ram Kapse. Now, we should be implementing that even more rigidly, I would agree. But to somehow think that only artists are being separately signaled is not true. We have a wonderful country where our artists do have a very large measure of freedom, sometimes on the fringe. In the case of Mr. Rushdi, his blatant resort to blasphemy, he has the consequence, he's got the right to express himself, but then I don't think I should be winning for him if he gets the consequences. 
and the consequences are not all. I'm not talking about the Iranian fatwa. I'm saying he's being asked not to come to Calcutta. Well, Taslima Nasreen is not being allowed to go to Calcutta. So I, as the president of the South Asia Federation in India, I'm looking after Taslima over here. No, I but this argument I to some extent, Sonjo, is bogus right. because if Salman Rushdie were as much a threat to law and order, there would have been a problem in Delhi, there would have been a problem in Bangalore, there would have been a problem in Mumbai. He went to all these three places. There wasn't yeah, a single the, voice that rose in protest. Law and order under our law and order under our constitution is a state subject, and it is for the duly democratically elected state government to make its decision and, like Rushdie, to face the consequences of this decision. It's the same argument that Jailalitha made in Tamil Nadu, but I want to bring Sanjoy Roy in. You know, again, you know, one welcomes Manish Tiwari and Leela Samson's uh, views as far as, uh, you know, the whole issue of film censorship and it being released. What is it that they've said that in the, in the constitution, according to the state, you've created a setup which allows or disallows certain segments of a film in case it causes all of these problems that money has been talking about. When that has been passed, then on top of that, you continue to ban something that is, you know, I mean, why? Again, why do we have to go into ban, burn, stop? Why do you ban a, a, an MF for sale from coming in and doing that stuff? I mean, today Ashita said, you know, I want to leave the country. I absolutely disagree with him. We need to stay in the country. We need to fight for these particular fundamental rights. Money is absolutely right in saying that, yes, the state government has every right to do this. But let's question that right. I think that's the issue that, and that's the debate that needs to be made. When in an intellectual platform, you're having a conversation and a discussion, it has to be different from a political, uh, a, a political discourse, which in a sense is the didactic discourse. A, a conversation at an intellectual literary gathering is for a particular group of people. Absolutely. It is of, uh, of mutual interest to both. So why why make it such a big issue? In fact, money we are not Iran. So why do we or why do we then pretend not to be Iran? Then we should say no. Salman Rushdie shouldn't come to India, or Salman Rushdie's PIO card, or whatever card he has, should be withdrawn, or whatever. Why play into the hypocrisy of the situation? Then we may as well pretend that we are Beijing or Tehran. What's the difference, Mr. Ayer? You know, we're no different. We're not standing up. Look at what UK did. They gave I mean, Rushdie the right to say they protected him. Instead, India is going down the Beijing route, going down the Tehran route, sir. I'm afraid you're hopelessly exaggerating. It may help your TRPs, but it does not help logic. We have not issued a fatwa. We have not banned Rushdie from coming to India. We have allowed this man to come in here despite the fact that he has outraged the sentiments of a large segment of our population. We've allowed him to do that. His other books are all being sold here. He is not being banned. And I think this attempt to portray him as a kind of Joan of Arc is hopelessly hyperventilated. The fact is that he was, he's here. He, the state government of West Bengal apprehended. And it's for them to apprehend okay. it or not apprehend it. And if they, if they apprehend a law and order situation and don't act, then you're also going to be in trouble. So therefore, Jayalalitha said the same thing, that she apprehended a law and order situation. And now there are talks going on and it would appear from the, I've just come in this morning from Chennai. It looks as if there is going to be a solution brought around some well, nine minutes of the program. free speech and in the meanwhile, has been the mutilated, has been, the, free the expression been stamped on. I'm going to leave it you over can, there, Mr. Manisha. Yes. Look, I'm not stopping his freedom of expression. I'm just saying that if you indulge in blatant blasphemy, then you have to face the consequences and you don't go around whinnying about it. Okay, I'm going to leave it over have there. The Mr. Manishankar Iyer, Sanjoy Roy and Kabir Bedi for joining us on the center stage face-off tonight. Thank you very much.